I mean, crypto should really be powering a larger and larger percentage of, the, of global GDP over time because they're just more efficient rails. Why wouldn't, you know, payments are like, like water flowing to the path of least resistance. Why wouldn't more and more of it happen over time? So my hope is that, you know, in 10 years we'll be sitting here and 25% uh, of global GDP is, is happening on crypto rails. There's broadly this recognition that this technology is here to stay. It has incredible innovative potential. We need to make sure we prevent consumer harm, things that happened with other companies and everyone's aware of. The crypto market is currently valued at around $2.68 trillion. 10% of the world is already interested in investing in crypto. Brian Armstrong, the CEO of Coinbase, made a bold prediction cryptocurrency could account for up to 25% of global GDP within the next 10 years. Coinbase is gearing up to roll out a new feature that will allow users to trade new crypto tokens before they launch. The Coinbase International Exchange and Coinbase Advanced will enable traders in eligible jurisdictions outside of the US, the UK, and Canada to buy perpetual futures contracts for assets that have yet to be listed on spot exchanges. Despite the promising future, Armstrong has acknowledged that regulatory clarity remains a significant obstacle. The cryptocurrency world is abuzz with the passage of the Financial Innovation and Technology for the 21st Century Act, commonly known as FIT21 which recently secured a bipartisan majority in the House. Heralded as a landmark piece of legislation, FIT21 aims to redefine the regulatory landscape for cryptocurrencies in the United States. FIT21 proposes a radical shift by transferring regulatory authority from the SEC to the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CFTC. In the absence of regulatory clarity, there has been a turf war between the CFTC and the SEC over whether crypto assets are commodities or securities. Armstrong believes that the underlying tokens are commodities, though there could be investment contracts on top of them that are securities. A Senate Appropriations Committee hearing on Thursday highlighted a question at the heart of U.S. crypto regulation. Does the U.S. derivatives watchdog have enough resources to police cryptocurrencies? Ready to uncover more insights? Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications always to get our latest content. Well, in the U.S., probably the biggest obstacle is regulatory clarity. Definitely. Unfortunately, the U.S. is a little behind on this. Uh, you know, Europe has already passed comprehensive crypto legislation. We've seen most of the G20 is actually already drafting or has implemented crypto legislation. And so there's broadly this recognition that this technology is here to stay. It has incredible innovative potential. We need to make sure we prevent consumer harm, things that happened with other companies and everyone's aware of. And so the U.S., uh, you know, I just got back from D.C. a couple of days in D.C. I met with uh, 12 or 13 different members of the Senate. Um, the Senate is very eager to move on legislation now after the House passed the FIT21 bill, the market structure bill, with strong bipartisan support. More than two-thirds of the House voted for it. And so the Senate now has a couple of bills um, being drafted that are hopefully going to turn this into law, whether it's in this Congress later this year or the next Congress. So we've got a lot of work to do there, and um, it's important that America gets this right. In, in the absence of that clarity, I probably don't have to tell all of you, um, there has been a bit of this turf war between the CFTC and the SEC, the two federal regulators. Are these commodities? Are they securities? You know, our point of view is that the tokens, um, underlying assets are, are commodities. There could be an investment contract or something like that on top of it uh, that is an actual security. Like if a, if a company is going to raise money, that's a security. There should be a path to register those uh, broker dealers that can trade them. And we'd like to work with the SEC to make that happen as well. But if we don't have Congress step in and act, the lack of clarity is just going to be weaponized and, you know, allow, not allow the industry to thrive onshore. Sometimes people ask me, you know, well, shouldn't Coinbase, why, do you, why are you interested in DeFi and self-custodial wallets? Wouldn't you want everybody to just have their funds on your platform? And, you know, I think centralized exchanges and everything are going to be great for a long, long time. But the real potential and innovation here is, comes from these peer-to-peer -peer transactions. How do we eliminate intermediaries? And that's, it, crypto really kind of makes a lot of those intermediaries unnecessary because if you can do instant settlement, you don't have to have, uh, you know, an intermediary with some sort of risk that is introduced with intraday settlement. Um, if it's just real-time settled, you can cut out the middlemen, you can reduce friction in the economy. And um, it's important for that to happen on chain. You know, Coinbase is, is moving more and more of our products on chain. We're trying to play in that space with self-custodial wallets, with DeFi, uh, to make sure that we enable the true innovation potential. Because now it goes from just being, you know, an asset class that 10% of the world wants to invest in or so, to being something that billions of people, the majority of people in the world can benefit from. 
I mean, crypto should really be powering a larger and larger percentage of, the, of global GDP over time because they're just more efficient rails. Why wouldn't, you know, payments are like, like water that's flowing to the path of least resistance. Why wouldn't more and more of it happen over time? So my hope is that, you know, in 10 years we'll be sitting here and 25% uh, of global GDP is, is happening on crypto rails. Over the past couple of years, the crypto-related business in the U.S. has gone through a rough patch. The crash of FTX and subsequent regulatory crackdowns by federal and state agencies painted a grim picture for the industry. Numerous companies such as Binance U.S., Coinbase, and Kraken were charged and fined by the SEC. Binance's ex-CEO Chang Peng Zhao has even received a four-month prison sentence. Others like Nexo opted to exit the U.S. market altogether. However, as the crypto market enters a new growth phase and the presidential election draws closer, the mood is starting to change. Over the weekend, Bitcoin Magazine reported that U.S. Congressman Ro Khanna, representing California's 17th Congressional District, is set to host a Bitcoin and blockchain roundtable in Washington, D.C. in early July, according to a private email sent by Khanna's office and seen by Bitcoin Magazine. Armstrong highlighted that D.C. has realized crypto represents a massive voter base in the U.S., which has made it a bipartisan issue. He emphasized the importance of building relationships between crypto entrepreneurs and their representatives. Now let's redirect our attention to a video. D.C. has realized this is a massive voter base in the U.S., and it, that's what's really started to make it a bipartisan issue. You know, there's 52 million Americans who've used crypto, we helped fund this uh, C4 called standwithcrypto.org, and they've now had 1.1 million Americans, voters, raise their hand and say, we really care about this issue, we want to elect pro-crypto candidates. That's gotten a lot of people's attention in DC. In some of the early primary races, there were some anti-crypto candidates that were expected to win and they lost. And so we're now in an environment where there are strong crypto advocates on both sides of the aisle, uh, we saw recently, for instance, in the House of Representatives, uh, this Fit21 bill I mentioned, got more than two-thirds of the House to vote for it. So there's clearly a political will that we need, we need clear rules in the U.S. Uh, the current situation is untenable. And, you know, in D.C., I just, you know, I met with the, the 12, 13 different senators over the last few days. There's bills going back and forth, um, being drafted. There's a lot of urgency from Senate leadership to say, how do we get this done? Now, legislation's complicated. The stars have to align. You know, any, so I, I, you know, any, anytime you go and try to attempt one of these things, you, know, you, you can never say if it's for sure or not. But I can tell you, this is one of the only bipartisan issues happening in Congress right now. I mean, the, the, for anybody who doesn't know, the con Congress really has been only in a place where they're passing, they're doing must-pass bills. There's not a lot of collaboration um, on bipartisan uh, work. And I would say crypto is, the number one bipartisan issue. It's kind of like the only thing that they're coming together to work on right now. So that's really encouraging. Um, it's really the voters that are in a democracy that are going to elect candidates which, which represent their values. And I think DC is waking up to that. I mean, we've actually helped invite a bunch of founders to go to DC. Um, you know, many of these representatives they, uh, they haven't really ever met someone in the crypto space, right? And they don't realize that, for instance, in Ohio, there's dozens of crypto entrepreneurs trying to build things in their state. And there's, there's sort of, it's just like anything, you know, it's a relationship. Relationships matter, right? If you're just seeing something on the internet, you don't really know if it's real. It's, these, these founders are incredibly compelling in person to go meet with the representative and say, you know, I care about this and I'm in your district and, um, this is an important issue to me, we gotta get this fixed, and there's just no substitute for that. So, um, crypto is finally getting organized <laughs> politically, yeah. and it's such a massive um, constituent of customers, shareholders, employees. Um, they deserve to have their, their views represented in our government. Um, if you haven't signed up, sign up at standwithcrypto.org. <laughs> in a report released earlier this week, Coinbase expressed concerns over the declining crypto talent in the U.S. amidst the ongoing increase in general corporate interest. Coinbase notes a significant decline in U.S.-based crypto developers, down by 14 points over the past five years to just 26% today. Top Fortune 500 executives have voiced concerns about a trusted talent shortage, seeing it as a greater obstacle to crypto adoption than regulatory issues. Growing political support and the successful bipartisan vote for the crypto-focused Fit21 regulation 
could signal a new era in crypto regulation in the U.S. Is Washington warming up to crypto? We welcome your insights in the comments section below. If you found this content valuable, don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to stay informed. Thank you for joining us on this journey.